why I'm gaining. <laughs> is it the grapple to here or is it the grapple to that? Yeah, I don't know. I've gotten here somehow. I don't know how. Yeah, yeah. I got here. Here's yeah. what I did. But you doesn't look like this company I look like. Yeah, because it's um, it. Yeah. Right? Like, you just push this up here with the right hand and then step under it, but that sounds good. Well, it's about changing direction. Now, now it's pretty much the only point where I feel it a little bit because you're still a bit, bit cold yeah. and it's like full range of motion. Okay, so. Um, it's still low. It's still low. No, it's mostly better. I keep it up. Yeah. I do not have a little bit of it. No. So, um, yeah, so upon, uh, upon request, we're going to begin a full. Uh, traverse through Peoria from start to finish, from A to Z. And we're going to go slow. Um, we're not, you know, we've done a lot of review and things like that, and warm ups. We've kind of done a whole section, kind of glossed over in one class and whatever. But we're going to go through each and every play. We're going to look at all the available variations that we know of. We're going to evaluate them, and uh, we're going to, you know, share questions and comments that we have about the play, and, 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 and yeah, and, and read the book. One step by step. I'm gonna try and film these. I'm not sure how useful they'll be, but you know, whatever, it's low maintenance. So uh, there that is, right? So let's um, let's start. Um, okay. So does the PD have any grappling comments in the I don't remember. Uh, blah blah blah. I don't know. So um, let's, let's um, skip the PD preface. The Getty preface, he says some graphical things. I'll just read through it um, quickly. All right, um, I'll start the book according to the order of the Lord, um, uh, my Lord the Marquis. I'll make sure nothing is left out so that my Lord may thank me after his nobility and curiosity. Let therefore start with arm wrestling or abazari. Abazari is of two kinds. One is done for pleasure or entertainment, the other is done in anger over one's life, employing every trick, deception, and cruelty imaginable. I want to talk about the second kind and show in good order that it comes to grappling successfully in the most common situations of life and death combat. When you engage in abazari, you must assess whether or not your opponent is stronger or bigger than you, whether he is much younger or older. You must also uh, take note of whether he places himself in any of the guards. Be sure to pay attention to all these things, and whether or not you are strong or weak. Um, use the grapples that arise from the vines, and be sure to know how to defend against those which the opponent uses against you. If your opponent is not in armor, strike him in the most painful and dangerous targets, such as the eyes, the nose, the temples, under the chin, and the flanks. Also see if you can come to the grapples that arise from the vines, whether or not you and your opponents are wearing them. Abazar calls for eight qualities. These are strength, speed, knowing advantageous grapples, knowing how to perform breaks, i.e. breaking the opponent's arms or legs, knowing binds, i.e. binding the opponent's arms so he is made defenseless and unable to free himself, knowing the most dangerous places in which to strike, knowing how to put the opponent to the ground without endangering yourself, knowing how to dislocate the opponent's legs and arms in various ways. 
will discuss each of these step by step throughout the book and um, blah, blah, blah. I'll now start with the guards of Allah's army. These guards can be different, different sorts, and some are better than others. There are four guards that are the best. Okay, so then right there, that uh, suggests that there's more than four. Mm -hmm. that, that he's aware of. He's just wanting to show four. These four guards are the best for both unarmored and armored Abazari, though these guards don't remain fixed for long due to the immediate grounds of Apollo. So that's an important point that um, in the long COVID review of theory that we did, I, we saw many data points that make a very strong argument that Fiore has armor and unarmored fighting in line the whole way through. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, so that's great. Um, and da -da -da. The first four masters you'll see are wearing, are wearing crowns. They will show you the four guards of Azari, which are Costa Longa, then Chingano, one against the other. Then they will form Costa uh, 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 Porte di Ferro and Costa Pantale, one against the other. These four guards make it possible to do all the things we listed in Abrazari, armored and unarmored. That is, I don't know what the grapples, binds, breaks, etc. Okay, and that's it. Then he just goes on to describe the uh, crown and garter system. Okay? Do we there's a difference between grapple and bind, really? Because to me, it's the same thing. Yeah, uh, the use of different words there, I, I really couldn't say. Well, to me, grapple is like the struggle in general, and bind is the actual key. Well, what's so the, the difference, difference between breaks and dislocations? Well, fracture, and like actually yeah. popping your shoulder. Like, there's an I, I suppose that's true. true. Yeah. I suppose that's true. You don't dislocate yeah. an elbow. Yeah. Right? I suppose you don't true. break a shoulder. You yeah. Dislocate. Yeah. Well, mostly it's dislocation. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's weaker than that. But yeah. I mean, if you do an arm bar, the yeah, energy is going to bring the elbow, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm? Um, okay. So, what was your, the so what was your question? The difference between grappling and binding? And binding, yeah, binding. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the yeah, so my, my, my instinct on what he means by binds is well, I think in his eight things, the binds would correspond to the keys. Yeah. But if you use it more loosely, the binds is kind of like, you know, Grabbing somebody, like binding up their arms, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, you know, binding up someone's arms, mm -hmm. kind of thing, right? Um, that you come to the bind from, you know, from from grab a binding the opponent's arm so he has made defenses on, and unable to free himself. That that's going to be key. Keys are one way to get binds. I don't know. I'm not sure if he would saw him. That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Is it? What? I mean, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right. Fine. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So there you go. Maybe, maybe there's something like that. It's a sort of final uh, state. Yeah. Yeah. That, and yeah. Restricted your movement. Yeah. Like well, you have advantage. Drop out. It's small. No one has advantage. Bind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's probably a decent way to work. Yeah. Um, so the we have this thesis in uh, Emma Fiore and stuff that Fiore is doing thing on the ground. This thesis comes from the fact that he was joining plays on the ground. The only play that the only time he ever refers to acting on the ground is in the, uh, the in the leg shot play in the Largo section of the sword in two hands, mm -hmm. where in the, in the leg boy he says, um, you know, this is how you would defend a shot. Attacking the leg this low is a really bad idea unless you happen to be on the ground. Oh, but I think he's admonished you to get up. I think. <laughs> but that's the only time he, he talks about doing something on the ground and it's with a sword attacking. It's just kind of like we sometimes force them to step back, get up. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Something, maybe, maybe something like that. So there's that, uh, there's that evidence point. The second one is his one of his eight things here, which he says, knowing how to put the opponent to the ground without endangering yourself. Mm -hmm. So we've we put those things together and we've theorized that what he might mean by saying without endangering yourself is by not going to the ground yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, not necessarily. You can be like on the top of them and not being in danger, yeah. but you are fighting on the ground. Right. So Which is often what happens when you, I don't know, when I'm here and I throw someone on the ground, I finish on the ground and I'm not in danger. Right. So the reason why I bring that up is because 
it's certainly being on the ground is more dangerous than being on your, on your feet, yeah. but it's possible that we've been over strict on that notion and that there may be, there's, maybe there's some purposeful ambiguity here, right? Putting the opponent to the ground without endangering yourself given the situation. Right? I mean, if you're in a more important situation, no, please demonstrate it beyond right. that. Uh, no, please demonstrate going to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's right. And, and I mean, that, that, is a, that is a strong anecdote. You know, but it's, it's, not, it's not like he says don't go to the ground, right? So, and whenever we do drop all, when we were at the previous south, we often finish in the ground and did a few things there. Sure. Before putting it up, because it was not complete. There was no right. clear upper hand, right? Right, uh, exactly. And, and the fact is that when you put somebody on the ground, there are some things you can do to finish the fight standing up, like soccer kicking. But there are things they can do to you too, right? And you can also go to the ground in a position of control and, yeah. and finish them there. Yeah. So, so you know, fighting. Yeah. 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 Exactly, exactly. So, so there it is, right? Um, it's some things to think about as we move forward. Okay. All right, so the post up. The post up. Let's read. I want to start with the PD first in every case because uh, that's going to be our contrast. So, PD post up. All right. Um, to start off, um, blah, 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 the name of God in St. George. Here it says St. George. We begin our system with grapple on foot, seeking to gain superior holds. Holds are not superior unless they give you advantage. Cool. That's <laughs> that's the don't that's Brian's <laughs> don't go to sand castle out of shit or whatever. <laughs> holds are not superior unless they give you advantage. So think of that plus Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, just because you're like Yeah. Uh -huh. Aha! Yeah, yeah. That's not. Yeah. Yeah, keep holding it. Yeah. <laughs> I know what that is. Ha. I know yeah. what that is. Yeah. 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 But that's uh, that, that's cool. He says that. Um, I'm, you know, it's it's a tough, it's a pathological, but it's uh, it's good. All right, holding us unless they're good. Um, <laughs> thus we um, thus we four masters seek to achieve advantageous holds through the techniques you see depicted. Here. Careful, we need to say don't don't waste your time on something that's yeah. useless. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he he'll definitely repeat that. Yeah, let him do it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, Postalonga. Postalonga says, I am ready to show you how I win with my holes. If I don't leave you wondering what happened, you'll count yourself lucky. Thanks. I love how like, Longa and Shingare are almost the same in this picture. Yeah, the, they do look very similar in, yeah. in, the, in the text. Absolutely. Um, so, alright, let's take them one at a time. So, Postalonga post says, I am the PD, just post along and let you get. I'm the postal longer, and this is how I wait for you. What the fuck? Yeah, that's weird. As you attempt a grapple, I'll put my right arm, now placed high, under your left, and enter the first play of Abrazade, and use this grapple to throw you to the ground. If that grapple fails me, I will enter into the one step. So, um, what I understand Fiori could be saying here is using the post longus text to almost hold a comment on the first play of Abedazara and not at all the comment on, post of, uh, on the post itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm comfortable with saving that uh, till well, we're coming back to this when we do the first play of Abedazara. But other than that, there's no real commentary to use in post longa other than uh, what the picture looks like. The weight part might be commentary on it. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's yeah, address yeah. that. So, we, yeah, we can we ignore that. Why? Yeah. Well, it, feels, <laughs> it feels instability, and usually, Postalonga is the result of an action, not just the result of a punch, result of a cut, result of a, you know, something. But it's, I mean, there's that French thing, right? <laughs> But it's not, uh, <laughs> it's like, thank you. <laughs> the picture he's got, well, it's not obvious whether his hand is drawn, is here, or it's like, you know. Oh, you know, yeah. it's not. Now, if it was by his dagger, right. by that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. It's like, look at my hand. Well, actually, he does have a dagger. He does, but it's not but it's on the other side. side. Yeah, yeah. If it, if, it was, if it was the other hand, I'd be like, all right. Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, you know, maybe we can say that's, maybe we can chalk that to the artwork. 
Maybe. I mean, it's would be we're just we're just we're just we're just spinning it, right? Yeah. But that might that might partially resolve that line. Mm -hmm. That might because what we don't what we don't want to do, I think, is we don't want to say you're going to be waiting here in Salonga as a browser. I don't want to say that. Right. Yeah. Maybe there's right. some way that makes sense, but right. Um, and can it be? I don't know if in some sort of boxing, sometimes you try to like keep the person distant, sort of thing. Yeah. Is, is that a thing? Like, like, it does. You, you see it a little bit. Yeah. It's not. Usually, the second hand is in proximity too. Though. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, like let, let's disregard the second hand. Yeah. But the idea of like in yeah. in boxing to be like mm, it's like no, you, you can get close to me, mm, and if you want to punch me, you'll have to like deal with that. We've first. got our elements. I know. But that's <laughs> <problem. Yeah. laughs> now, there is a, there's another point here that might comment on, which he says, this is how I wait for you. As you attempt to grapple, I'll put my arm now placed high. Yeah. It's my the other thing, yeah. There's motion there. What's, so is there a low post longa? It's like, eh, eh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, you're not gonna, you know, punch like this, right? Unless well, so uh, there, there. I'm gonna suggest that maybe right. what he means when he says, I, I put, my arm is now placed high, is that like, he's saying, this is where, this is where I wait for you. Post alarm is gonna be a place that I engage you, but it's gonna kind of come out to meet you. So it's not like I'm gonna be waiting here for you, as it were. Maybe it's, but I'm, gonna, I'm waiting to do my post alarm to you. Yeah, yeah. I feel as like you know lost mean? something in translation. All right. Well, that's also, of course, always. Yeah, it's always. always. But, but there you go. Maybe it's the idea of, like, of this is the first thing I'll do. Right. Could be. Could be. I mean, like, as yeah. a translation problem, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I'm waiting to do that to you. Yeah. Because it is literally the right. first play of rock. Right. Yeah. I just. Uh, but but branches, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This, is, this is what we're doing. Yeah. That, that first line is problematic, but there it is, right? We have some theories. Um, but let's move on. Unless, is, is, there, is there anything else anybody wants to say about this one? No? Okay. All right, second one, from top, uh, verse two. PD says, I seek to reverse the fight. And from this position, I will force you to go to the ground. The Italian word is mutation. That's quite a French mutation. Mutation. I don't know if that's reverse or change. Um, mutation. And we use mutation. Mutation change. Change, right? Change reverse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I seek to change the play. Reverse. Change the yeah. yeah. Change the course of the yeah. yeah. In this position, and from this position, I'll force you to grab. Okay? Obviously, it's a fall. Why do you refer to the second player? Um, right. Force 2 says, in the beginning, I will go against you and then you can go on. I'll break your grapple for sure. I will come out of this car, enter into Porte de Ferro, and, I will, and I'll be ready to throw you to the ground. And if your defense makes this fail, I will try to use you in other ways, with breaks, fines, dislocations, as shown. Okay, so from, from Wars 2, I will come out of Wars 2 into, come out of Wars 2 into Iron, Iron Gate. Which I, I, I take us all to, to to the instinct is to go kind of get on the inside, as opposed to like, you know. But I guess yeah. it doesn't matter. You can, you can change. Yeah, that's true. True, true, true. Just a small point yeah. that we haven't yeah. really discussed in a long time. Yeah. Uh, Boss Tooth is always shown uh, lead leg lead on yeah. the same side, mm -hmm. but we've discussed in the past that Emma that Boss Tooth from the opposite side could be sometimes valid, which I'm not super keen on. I, I find this is really can kind of twisted. Okay, well, well actually, let's, well, let's discuss that. So this is going to be a theme, uh, this, is a, this is an ongoing debate and question for all theorists uh, with, in all sections of the book. And that is that, how important are the pictures to the poster? So there are some who will say that the pictures are critical to the nature of the poster, such that the poster is the picture, right? And this will mean the footedness, the handedness, as it's drawn is as you're intended to show. Others will say that no, the, the picture is not critical. Though we really represent the best version of the poster, right? And and there's a kind of a spectrum in, in between. Someone will say sometimes the picture is critical, sometimes it's not, based on some logic of some kind, right? So this is an open question. 
Um, Costa Longa is shown leaf foot leaf hand. That's true. Boris Tooth is shown leaf foot leaf hand. I'm uh, I'm on the one end of the spectrum on this. I don't think the picture is critical to the nature of the post. Though there, I would definitely say, depending on the post, uh, there are better handedness importances than others. So I would say with Costa Longa and Boris Tooth, these are sided posta, mm -hmm. and so leaf hand leaf foot will make it better. But I wouldn't say you can't do this or you can't do mm -hmm. Costa Longa. That's my, that's my. Though it may not be as good, I still think you need it. Um, so you're all, of course, entitled to um, your, your view on that. Um, and you know, a, a reasonable, uh, I would say, on the other side of the spectrum, one might say, well, these are strong, these are weak, so just avoid these and do these. Why fuck around with the weak stuff? Just go and do the strong stuff or do other things. Okay. Fair enough, right? Fair enough. Anything else on Boris Tooth? Uh, this will be a little slow in the post uh, section, I know that, but uh, bear with me. All right. I'm trying not to labor too much. All right, okay. If you fail to beat me with your skill, I believe that with my power, I will hurt you both. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are Very helpful. The PD is off and on. In the Getty, I wait for you motions in Porte de Ferro to gain a full advantage in graph. The actions of Abra's art on my art, and I play a great part, uh, and, uh, yeah, and I play a great part in the lance and uh, axe and sword. I am Porte de Ferro full of tricks. Those who play against me find misery and pain. Go ahead and try to grapple me. I'll throw you to the ground with some strong grapples of my own. Okay, so what does he say there? He implies that. Porto de Ferro is a good post to, um, to, to lie in, right? Which we think of as probably one of the things that stabile means, mm -hmm. right? So we can lie in it safely since I wait motionless for you, Porto de Ferro. Okay, fine. Says it's full of tricks and it's good. Right? He places it third as it seems to be the opening game. Yeah, interesting. Very, very, the first few plays. Though, he, yeah, I mean, where he does say that he intentionally sets them against each other. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, maybe maybe he didn't place it first because, or, you know, I guess he could have placed these two first, these two second. Here we are. But here we are. We're about to fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Fight. And, um, yeah, and so he says that these plays are, I put the fellow full of tricks. I understand that to imply that because it's, um, because it's low and it's a conservative post it can kind of become anything. That um, it's got all of these different things in common in, right? Full of tricks in that, you know, it can do whatever you need to do and it can change, and, and, whereas some posts are not that less. It's also for all. So, and and provocative. Yes, yeah. I'm completely open. I'm doing nothing here. Yeah. Mm, it's neutral. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What is one way you was wearing this? Very practical yeah. Yeah, see, and, and, and that's actually and it's the only one that's like that, right? It, for those people who really buy into the, the dress theory of yeah. the Masters of Dagger, mm -hmm. where the dress is signifying something about the usefulness of the plays or yeah. whatever, this guy's in full regalia. Or is beer, right? Mm. Although no beer. Mysteries. This is the legend. Yeah. Yeah, but the, but there we go. Yeah, there we go. Now, he's also put it. Uh, he's cited, he's a uh, look before. I don't believe that's important. It's pretty great draw when you look at the future. But sure. he is standing very, very low. Yeah, that is, that is true. That is true. Well, I think it's the ability. Cool. You see this here. Square. Yeah. Yeah. Your first show. Liver. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right, and last but not least, uh, Fung Fale, I advance upon you. Ooh. With my arms well forward, to lay my hands on you in various ways. That's really cool. That's very interesting. Okay. Yori says, and Getty, I'm the Porto Pimpali, gains the route. Okay. Interesting. That kind of That's similar. Yeah. yeah. While I am in this guard, you will come against me and attempt attacks. But I will move from this position and completely get you from Porto de Ferro. Yeah, I'll get you from Porto de Ferro. You will be worse than if you were in hell, blah, 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 blah. Because I'll sell you behind the price, you'll see who's better. It's a very good price. It's a good line. Say it. I'll, I'll, 
you will be worse off than if you were in hell because I'll sell you vines and grapes at a very good price. <laughs> it's like such sauce. And this is how we're starting, right? right. I think we should put out on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> selling vines and grapes at a very good price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and have a picture of the one uh, yeah. uh, yeah. the guy there. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, um, okay, cool. So uh, what does he say substantially about from Tali? Then see who's better at all. Who gains the grapples. So the PD says, I advance upon you, from Tali. That suits our, in, our intuition with uh, the right gate. Mm -hmm. There's this idea of, like, this is an entry. Um, yeah. yep. Going to the grapple. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, this is more like, um, I'm waiting. I'm coming, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And we are against each other. Yeah. yeah. So when it's like, yeah, sure, come at me, go to that. Like, yeah. Come at me. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, that's it. So, yeah, I mean, he gains the grapples. While I'm in his guard, you, you will come against me. So he kind of, if we take that view, he's kind of saying two things, or two opposite things here. I can gain the grapples, but while I'm in this guard, you will come against me and attempt attacks, but, but I will move from this position and skillfully get me from poking the grapples. And you'll see it in that box there, Katie. So cool. I don't think it looks like coming against it necessarily like an action. I don't think it could be like literally coming against like. Oh, okay. Mm. You come mm. against that. Right? Okay, mm. okay. Come against me. Like you'll 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 engage my guard. Yeah. Like you'll come, you'll yeah. okay, close my guard. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. could be. Absolutely could be. Um we, you know, we also, uh, I, have, I have to constantly remind myself of this. We all, we're, we're interfacing with Europe through the translation of uh, Tom Leone, in this case, who's already done uh, fairly um, in the spirit of the text translation in the first place. So one of the things that Aldo has uh, against his interpretations is that he finds that oftentimes he's taken some liberties which don't align to the, the letter of the text, the mm -hmm. letter of the law. And he thinks that sometimes it's Liberties are are, are, are incorrect. Yeah. They just color the uh, yeah. Thing. So and, and this is um, maybe he went for like thing that sounded good instead of literal. Right. So usually the the dichotomy in translation is being literal but hard to read, mm -hmm. or being uh, writing so it's easier to read but you're having to make. Maybe you should have both accessible, right? The literal one that's like uh, and the interpretation. Absolutely. I, I very much look forward to uh, all of us a partial one complete. Oh, okay. I look forward to him completing it, and then it will be separate. Because then we'll have we'll have the ultimate, right? We'll have the, the transcription. We'll have the literal yeah. and the translation. So That's three right. could be the literal, and four could be kind of more like interpretation or like yeah, something looser. Yeah. yeah. If, if I may, I was listening to podcast on the way down both language and mm -hmm. without having an expert in a particular dialect. Yeah, it's pure oak. Yeah, yeah. Oak. it's very hard because yeah. the specific example we presented in the earlier was um, a phrase in Canterbury Tales, I hope you will be dead. Mm -hmm. In the north of England, mm -hmm. sorry, the south of England, at the same time, it's like, what, 300 kilometers away. It meant if the literal translation and the spiritual one would be, I hope he's dead, I can't be done. In the north of England, just a little bit higher, mm -hmm. it meant, I expect. Mm -hmm. I hope he will be there. Like I, I, I hope, hope. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So right. I meant expect. Expect. So I mean, do you want it or do you think it's going to happen? We, we yeah. have that same thing here. Yeah. And yeah. I, I strongly think that's exactly what's going on with uh, the. Uh, uh, but no! The longer? Yeah. The longer? Because yeah. Yeah. it's that like special or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is it, like uh, the weight part? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, 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 yeah, the weight for you. The weight and hope for us. A special. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's literal translation and there's the meaning of the yeah. era. I choose, yeah. I choose to aspect of it. Yes, but, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm full of shit, I don't think oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but because of things like that, I feel like, here you go, wait, wait somehow the pictures to spiritual translation by all the people, literal ones, and it's somewhere in there. It, yeah. it, I think it could very easily be something like, I expect to use this. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, exactly that, something, but something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. But you made it right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and it's it's because it's because of exactly what you what you say, Liam, that I think a really a really important uh, what's the word 
attitude to have between us, our group, the scholars, is to have an attitude of, you know, if you can make a good argument for the thing that you have, then great. But there's, there's, all, there's all sorts of unknowns here. So uh, we, we'd rather we'd rather have a have a, have a we'd rather have a culture of celebrating these unknowns and kind of chewing over them all the time than saying, you know, this is the it's opinion. Living. It's living. It's living. Yeah, we're trying to exactly. It's living. And we may never right. try it because That's right. dialects. That's right. Yeah. It's probably been lost quite a long time. Maybe dead. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, moving on to actually getting to the play. First play of Avatar. The PD says, with this move, I will either force you to the ground, or else your left arm will be dislocated. <laughs> the guy says, this is the first play of Avatar. Every guard of Avatar can be used to come to this play or grapple. Use your left hand to grip the opponent's right arm at the bend of the elbow. And then place your right arm straight past his left elbow. Then immediately execute the grapple for the second play, i.e. grab him and give him a volta to the body as shown. This will either put him to the ground or dislocate his arm. Okay? We'll read the second play too because they kind of go together. He says in the second play, either I'll make you kiss the ground with your mouth, or I will force you into the lower wall. Oh, wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where, where, where is that coming from? The lower yeah. lock. I will also I will warn you though that the PD translation is not of the same caliber as this. This is this is not a PD caliber translation. It's worse. Maybe I forget who did it. Could even be Chester. I don't know. But uh, but we should be. Does someone have notions of that? No, not now. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, and the second play, and the Getty says, as the student of the first master said, I am sure to either throw this man to the ground or break to dislocate his left arm. If the opponent is going against me, uh, if the opponent going against the first master tries to free his hand from the master's shoulder to perform something else, I take the master's place and do the following. I immediately let go of the opponent on my left hand, and use it to grab his left leg, placing my right hand under his throat to push him to the ground, as you will see in the third play. Okay? Um, last but not least, I want to read the Pokalonga text again. I am the Pokalonga, and this is how we do it. As you attempt to grapple, I'll put my right arm, now place I under your left, enter the first play of Abazari, and use this grapple to throw you to the ground. If that grapple fails, I'll do other shit. All right. So, how do, what's um, what's um, one major interpretation of this play? Well, in the olden days, because the, in the olden days of Hema, we were very picture focused. The uh, this play uh, at Emma and elsewhere, and still it still is done in lots of places. It's done with a horse tooth. So this play is done where you come horse tooth to the uh, yeah, okay. to the elbow or to the meat of the. Of the Arm, and you try and get this rotation, right? Try to get this rotation, and then you pull over and do the, the second play. And and you know the bend in the elbow, if he strikes you, fine, whatever, you block it, and you come up and force two. I think you could work. Okay. Sure. So let's do that. Let's um, let's pair up and uh, and five and five. Yeah. Four suits now? Yeah, just like that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Do it on both sides. Do both sides. Do both sides. Do both sides. Do side. Right? 
come with, uh, with, with that forward foot. You might also decide to pass forward with that other foot. I think there's a few different ways you can do it. Um, but a lot depends on whether or not you get the elbow up for your kick or not. If you don't get the elbow up, then this isn't a bar. This isn't a bar because you can just move around. You can't, you can't bar into the air. Right? It's never gonna, it's never gonna hit a solid object if you if you bar with that. So the only way to actually make the bar is to ultimately have it have the elbow pointing up and then descend the structure down. Um, but anyway, that's the finish. Okay, I just wanted to gloss over that. Okay, so yeah, five and five on both sides, and then we'll move on. Hey, you can double up on it or not. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, we need to be yeah. on yeah. the right to yeah. 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 We haven't even talked. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, this is this yeah, I find there's no step required. I find just a first a towards my name. It's a good Okay. Are you doing the shoulder? Right. I was going to ask. 
sort of feels like in between. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good question. So the front end of the tricep, yeah. so the end. Yeah, so the, the, tricep, the tricep extending into the shoulder yeah. blade. So yeah, maybe maybe you'll land you'll landmark on the tricep. That first the tricep into his ear. Yeah, exactly. But I have seen like this, this will very much change based on proportion. Well, relatively similar to the proportion, so this will work uniformly with us, but um, smaller to bigger, it doesn't work well. Uh, um, I, I really do like all those uh, strike shoulders. Yeah, I agree as, as well. Yeah. So yeah. It, it feels like a third slight possible variation, then it's not quite the same thing as a knife edge and a tricep. Strike. But it is, it is, it is it in a problem. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, we might as well put, uh, put, was that a hand up or something? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just for me, the difference yeah. between going from the yeah, lower going to the shoulder yeah. is trying to affect the arm versus trying to affect 43 you know, sure. which gives you different opportunities. And I think particularly if, you're, if you have bigger than you, maybe you need to disrupt 43 you know, to get the, uh, the arm off. Yep. That's a theory. Yep. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That, uh, that, that could be. Um, I, I do think there, there is a, a big difference between the two, but I'll, I'll say that until um, after you do So uh, let's add footwork in two. We haven't even talked about it, we haven't talked about footwork at all. Um, there are two main variations. Well, actually, that's not true. There's three main footwork variations for this that I'm aware of and I'm on right now. Okay? Um, one is nothing, no footwork. Okay? That's done in a lot of places. And in, in theory, it can work just fine, especially if your proportion is relatively similar. So he does the thing, right? And I go in here, and then on the fall one, of course, it's going to be some kind of footwork music, right? So one, uh, no footwork with the strike. Two, and I think this is done in them as well, is an increase with the strike, okay? So I'm going to increase into it with the strike in, in one. And lastly, there is the way that Olga and I um, have liked to do it these days, and that is with a two-fold with the strike, okay? Um, so uh, try those out. Um, again, I'm being agnostic as to you know, value on those. I, I do think they're all, you can do them in all, all, all those different ways. It's probably tactical. Um, for my part though, I will say that I do like the logic of the two Volta because it not only powers the, the um, it powers the strike without putting you closer, but it also shifts you more to the side you're attacking and shifts you away from the, from the other arm, which I like. But I just think that's a tactical preference on my part. I don't think it's really an objective value judgment on it. It's just these, these are how you can do it. Okay, so let's do this. The, the, let's do that straight arm attack. Let's go on five and five on both sides and try different footwork and see what we see what it Okay. Stop it here. 
So there's one last thing I want to add. Well, actually, first of all, let me pause. Let me ask if people have any comments. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I found something. I, I hadn't ever noticed that that he gave up the, uh, the lower key. Oh, yeah. It comes yeah, up super that, yeah. easily mm -hmm. if I do it the old way, uh -huh. right? If I do it here, it's right there. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I would never get there if I was doing it the uh, uh, long mm -hmm. I'd never end up in that situation. Mm -hmm. I find mm -hmm. some people Zelbo end up bending that situation somehow. So maybe but but the thing is, the thing is, I'm starting elbow to elbow. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I'm going this way, I'm elbow to elbow from yeah. the get go. So I'm never going to wind up yeah. in that lower key. Got you. Got you. I'm going to say some major differences. But yeah. If I'm starting here with a bit of a bent arm and striking the angle. Yeah. It's, it's there. Well, that's that's the in the picture of the master too. Right. That's that's direct out of the picture. As well. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. no, but I, I do think that's a that's an important observation. So, what is what is the critical geometric shape required for keys? Bent, bent arm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, the bond, the the brakes are straight. The keys are bent. Mm -hmm. So, if um, I'm going to posit that you can't control what you get, and actually, this was going to be my on my next comment. I don't think you can. You can uh, reliably control what you get when you do this uh, entry, especially if you do it with books, because they're going to react in some way, right? And I think this is all about having basic options as to what you can do if you get A or B. On the first place, the 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 strike the the thing we're reacting to is a straight arm grab, right? So any case, any straight arm grab on either side, you can do this. So that's cool, that's a very broad category. On a, a second, if you do this and you get a straight arm result, you can go for the break. Mm -hmm. If you do this and you get a bent arm result, you can go maybe for the lower key or the third play. Depending on whether you're in the third Right, and so fine, does it have to be any more complicated than that? It's just you, you, and you switch what you get. So there's gonna be more people. It, exactly. Yeah. The last thing I wanted to add, and this is, this is more of a tactical, innovation, I think, is um, with, with the left hand. So I find that when I do the two the volta and add a strike, I find that it's quite an explosive piece of energy. And I find that it's likely the person's going to leave. More often, it's likely I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blast them off me, which in a sense is solving my problem. But if I want the break, then this doesn't, like, this doesn't help me if he flies off, right? I don't get the break. And it's, we combine that fact, I think, with the fact that it's not obvious what this block is doing to the play, right? He says, okay, I'm gonna put my, he actually doesn't even say block, we interpret it as a punch, but he says I'm gonna place my hand in the crook of their elbow, okay, and then I'm gonna do the same over here. So what the fuck's going on over here? If he's not striking me, what am I gonna do with this arm? Am I gonna find the arm? No, I don't think so. I think it's appropriate to place it here, just like he does in the fifth round of the master in an attempt to make this result more reliable. If you do this here, you're more likely to have the arm stay and stay straight. So you can get the straight arm result that, that you may want. Um, whereas if you don't have the arm here, if there's nothing, if there's nothing on this end, then you're going to do this and it's either going to stay straight or it's going to bend and you're going to have to yeah. So I really do think that in the absence of being struck, in the absence of being struck, putting it here, and doing a tooth volta is a great thing to do with the arm. Okay? But that's more that's more tactical. So just, um, yep. just one last thing. I yep. learned last week uh, teaching that mm -hmm. students of GP5. Mm -hmm. It makes more sense for shorter students to do an increase to actually reach your target. There you go. But for me on uh, on Inga, I find yeah. when I do the increase, I'm too deep. Right. And then I can backtrack to find the other sure. target. Sure. So that's right, yeah. And, that to me sounds perfectly reasonable. You're going to adapt the footwork to the, 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 the situation. Yeah. So um, let's uh, let's do a few more. Um, let's do a, let's do a few each at least. Let's go the bent arm. See, 
What did you say about the lower key? That it was happening, it was easy with the bent top. No, it was easy with the boards too. Easy when I do a lot of the boards too, because I would get the yellow yeah. with my hand and bend it into position. Right. Whereas if I do a longer, my hand is never on the elbow. Right. Okay. Are you cool here? I'll ask you to guide the wrist. No, really. No, no, no. It's like, yeah, it's like if, I'm, if I'm here, I can get it there. Yeah. And then you try this. Right. Yeah. There's a positive. Uh, uh, yeah. Sure. Well, you, you're right. I am yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. But, yeah. yeah. When you did it, yeah, it's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. 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 My arm bent, and then I like, you know, went into the. Uh, if you, you went up, and my arm happened to go on. Yeah, it, 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 could, it, it could just right. go in. It could just go in. But there's the possibility. I, I find the possibility when I, when I start to yeah. double with the hand, I don't find the possibility. Yeah. When right. I, when yeah. I, if yeah. the hand happens this way, it won't happen. Yeah. 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 Okay. Not so, quite a lot of people. All right, so yeah, let's let's do a few more, a few more each side, and let's let's kind of do the last bit of experimentation. I'm going to try a couple of uh, lower keys, um, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe I'll maybe try uh, try that um, uh, uh, that hand grab. I think that it's perfectly reasonable to go here right away, and if the ghost to strike you, you can you can deploy from there. You might even return to there, right? You know, and I do think you can you can cover the strikes, and especially if you uh, if you two to Volta, right? And you can cover a strike, right? And you can come back, go, and you look at how far away I am on the other side. So I, I think that all fits together uh, uh, nice. But especially yeah, that 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 um, uh, oh, yeah. bent on attack that makes a lot of sense. To you. And try try putting your hand on the head too. I think that's uh, once you've set whatever whatever it is, whatever it is, once you see the back of the head. Put that hand there, right? And that, even if you don't have a great grab on this side or whatever, I think that hand really makes it hard for them to get back up. But you want to give that a place. Okay, let's do a few more. So, so um, Matt brought up a great point. 
Um, where's where's striking this? I didn't even talk about it. So, as I understand striking, the point of striking is to gain tempo. Striking is not a reliable way to end the fight because it's it's dependent upon people's constitution mm -hmm. to a large extent, and that's something that you can't predict. And it's also sometimes difficult to judge, especially in a life death situation. There's a million anecdotes of people who have constitutions and you know the abilities to take pain that are more than what they look, right, or less than what they look, right. So you don't want to you want to make a habit of resting your, your your fight on something that's unreliable. Um, so striking is a fight ending, but it can usually gain time with pain, and that's why I think striking is pain compliance in the same way that. Uh, high pokes and groin shots and shit, it's all pain compliance and all the stuff. <laughs> where are the strikes in this? Um, wherever, <laughs> there's right. wherever there's grappling, it makes sense to add a strike before you do your technique. Right? So that's that's totally something that we can do with all of these. Um, and then um, there was one more thing. Oh, I was going to bring up the What was that other thing? Oh, oh yeah. Um, and, uh, um, uh, I understand this, this, um, these three plays here, these first three plays, as straight arm grabs or bent arm grabs. High bent arm grabs, high straight arm grabs. So this first, these first two plays, you can do against a high straight arm grab. This, uh, the third play against a high bent arm grab. And because the arm can only either be bent or straight, then we have basically a universal reaction to any grab that's above our waist, really, right? Um, it can be unlikely for someone to enter in with gravity by the left handles. <laughs> usually, usually the gravity is either going to be high or it's going to be, you know, it's going to, it's going to be low. So, um, whenever you get a straight arm grab in any situation, right, you can just uh, throw this on immediately. And if you started with a strike and then you do this, boom, and then boom, then right, then uh, then great, great. Isn't that isn't that cool? So, um, all right. Any last thoughts? Before we move on? No? Cool. It's a lot there. Um, all right, bent on grab. So he actually gives him a set of instructions twice, I think. So let's um, do the P first. Third play in the PD, he says, I will put you to the ground on your back. I will not let you back up again without injury. Thanks, Fiora. Um, but the picture looks relatively the same as uh, the game. There it is. Notice how he's actually very deep. Actually, that's the main difference. In the PD, he's very deep. In the Getty, he's not very deep at all. Even five or six. Yeah. In the Getty, his third play, he says, when the student, um, oh, 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 let me read this text again. Um, so, first thing to know right away is that Fiore does actually describe his third play in the sequence. And so, for a long time at Emma, we have thought about and demonstrated the first, second, and third place in sequence because he actually talks about them in sequence, which is rare uh, to, 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 in the book. So that's a perfectly fine way to discuss it. Not to say that it couldn't happen on its own, but Fiori actually talks about it in sequence. So he says, I'm trying to do this first play, and then he bends his arm to, uh, to do something else. I, I can take the master's place and do the follow. I immediately let go of the opponent's arm with my left hand and use it to grab his left leg while placing my right hand under his throat to put him to the ground. You will see this in the third play. Third play says, what the student just uh, told me said is the truth. From this grapple, I have just switched, um, from his grapple, I have switched to this one to throw the opponent to the ground and dislocate his left arm. If the opponent took his left hand away, from the master's shoulder, the master would arrive at the third play as shown. So with the first play and the second, which is one of his plays, the master would send the opponent to the ground on his face. For the third play, the opponent would hit the ground on his back. Okay? So we know the third play very well. I think it's pretty intuitive. Let's do it. I just want to point out two things to start. Number one, um, because it's against the bent arm, while I definitely think you can do it in sequence, obviously you can, you could also do it in isolation. Any bent arm, high grab you get, you can immediately go to the third, the third play. Secondly, he also says in the Getty, um, I had just switched to this one to throw the opponent to the ground or dislocate his left arm. So I don't know what that dislocate his left arm means. Or. Uh, 
I mean, so that, that might be referring to this, actually. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like either you do that or you do that. Okay. The phrase is offered. It yeah. says I skip to this. You do that, but. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. But there's all from like a mid yeah. crossover yeah. between. I would have done that, but now I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Just looking at stuff that going to grab. Now we're doing that. Okay. Cool, great, great. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Um, so uh, let's do it. Um, maybe maybe experiment a bit with getting getting deep. It's my view that you want to be as deep as you can get, but uh, some people disagree. Um, and there's some there's some arguing about doing if you're doing it in armor, maybe you don't want to get that deep because you don't want the army tangled and shit. So maybe you only want to get so deep, you know, maybe crossing the leg is, is sufficient. So that's a thing, right? But anyways, let's do it. Feel free to do it in sequence or isolate. If I want to take the glasses off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe he'll turn the chin, but maybe he'll his whole body will be like, oh, 
Oh, he's going to step out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, and then he'll step out because he's trying to take some force away. You know. Yeah. I've, I've always been confused by this because I don't feel like I have, I have the extent of my arms. I have very limited ability to fight this. It hasn't shown. It hasn't shown like going through the face. So you're not coming like here and turning it. You're just going that way. Yeah. By push sideways, do you mean like to turn the chin? You mean? So I'm good at turning the chin. Yeah. Yeah. Across the shoulder. I'm good at carrying the chin. I feel like instructor has been confused on whether I am also pushing yeah, yeah, yeah. to the side. That's that's what I'm asking. Okay. I think I think yeah. it's fairly obvious that I'm gonna that I'm gonna uh, uh, mm -hmm. turn the chin. Mm -hmm. But that is a straight that that, that is a that is a straight mm -hmm. straight through. I want to know if I'm yeah. also it's a, this mm -hmm. way. it's a great question. Oh, okay. So uh, yep. No, no, right. Like, because I remember in Aikido there was something similar and it was doing this and then shifting from the back. Right. It, so it, was so, movement. it wasn't so much like a lateral, it's like a bottom yeah. straight and footwork. So you, you put the higher gate. Yeah. yeah. But like you're kind of taking the head and bringing it straight down. Yeah. Same thing here. Um, so here's, here's the opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. It depends on how you, how your cores end up in relation to each other. Okay. If you end up in a position like this, where his, bal his balance is not resting on yours, yeah. then you're in a position where you're going to have to do some pushing. Yeah. Okay. Same if they bend. Yeah. I don't disagree with that at all. If you end up in a position where their balance is on you, if it's his balance on your core, right? Then you would have to do less, possibly no pushing, because how you're going to throw them is you're going to remove. You're going to you're going to remove your uh, your balance from them, mm -hmm. right? So the throw. So once you're in, you're holding them up, and the throw is going to be not holding them up anymore. And it kind of looks like you're pushing because you're guiding his head down, but you're only guiding his head down because you want to make sure his back was at the lens first. But but the fact the reason why you can't you get on in is so that you can take it away. As soon as you take it away, he's gonna fall. So that's that's my that's my attempt at a, at a solution to that. He's got no balance, then the throw is taking away what is holding him up, which is you. If he's got balance, then you're gonna have to do some pushing. But I do think it'll work either way. Yeah. Um, though of course how big and strong they are will if I did this to, I don't know, is it who's or something big? It's a bad Yeah. <laughs> Even if I kind of got him tipping a little bit, if I tried to push him with my, my spaghetti arms, he would his beard would look like that. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> no. And if he's watching this, don't shake your beard, it's a source of your power. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what that sounds like, but that's my that's my best guess. Uh, okay. Um, what else? Anything else? No? Okay, we got uh, 20 minutes left. All right, cool. So let's do, let's do the next two. Okay? Um, fourth and fifth play. Fourth and fifth play. In the PD, the fourth play says, even if you were a master of grappling, I will force you to the ground with this technique. Good. Cool. <laughs> The fifth play says, with the grips that I have you, that with the grips that I have on you, above and below, I will break open your head on the ground. Cool. Great. So PD is very image oriented because the text is so small. And guess what manuscript most curious in the early days started out with? Yeah. So this is why early fury was very was very um image image focused, it was all, you know, a long march from by necessity. Because like, what are these instructions telling you? Not, not, a, whole, not a whole lot. Yeah. That was in the end point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be good, be better. Yeah. And I, I should also add, I was also add, I've, I've gone through various um, stages of, uh, of uh, what's the word, animosity uh, with the images in, in, this, in, mm -hmm. in these books. I'm much less confident in my pro-text views than I used to be. Because I do realize that there are some images where we actually we need the images to tell us a whole lot, because the text doesn't. And so, you know, even somebody like me who likes to say, 
I, you know, I want to I focus on the text more than the image. Uh, there's sometimes you can't do that, and it's arbitrary and it doesn't feel good. So, so they're both important. Um, they're both. Anyway, all right. So we see the fifth, the fourth, and fifth play, um, and, and this is a good this is a good uh, uh, example of where a textual person all of a sudden likes the images. Notice the images in, in the PD. The scholars on the right both times. The scholar's footedness is the same both times. And the scholar's handedness is the same both times. Is that coincidence or not? I don't know. But I'm going to suggest that it isn't. Um, because, of course, the, the enemy's uh, footedness and handedness are different. Again, fourth play says, this is the fourth play of this order which succeeds easily if the student can put the opponent in ground. Thanks, Greg. If he can't do it in this manner, he can do other things. Thanks, Greg. You'll learn that the plays are not all the same. <laughs> and grapples are seldom identical. Therefore, if you don't have a good grip, try to gain one quickly, or else the advantage may go to the opponent. Okay, so another, <laughs> another part where he doesn't really comment on the play at all, he just gives some general stuff. Um, this play will work if you do well, that's where he starts work. And if you can't do well, then do other things. You will learn that the plays are not all the same, and grapples are seldom identical, therefore, you don't have a good one kind of game at all. That's a deceptively important piece of advice. That's a comment on the nature of grappling, which is that it's very fluid. And, um, you know, it's very fluid in a way that's kind of unique. You know, the other uh, fencing and, and Fighting with the longer weapons has an element of that, but grappling changes so quickly from one moment to the to the other that there's a direct admonishment if you're a if something's not working out, get rid of it and do something else. Um, and uh, that fits with our under our modern understanding of grappling because that's still something that's present in all grappling arts. There's a tendency for us to see something and try to make it work, even when the moment has passed and we need to abandon and try something else. Um, so, so Fury says something very important there, even though he doesn't tell us at all what the fourth play is. But okay, so what do we have? Even with the getting, we really just have the image. What the image looks like is it looks like close grapple and play with a cross body hold, where um, in the image, the, the scholar, he has one, um, it's called the lower hand on the lower back, and the upper hand on the chin. Apparently he's going to put the person to the ground like this, and we uh, conventionally think that it's going to be like that, right? It's going to be an extension of Posa Longa with a tight hold on the lower back, and then you're going to put him right there. You need to follow the foot, okay? The fifth place says, in this grapple, I use my right hand against your throat to give you pain and suffering, which will cause you to go to the ground. Also, if I grab you under the left knee with my left hand, you'll be sure of your falling down. So he says, do the grapple to the throat, right? We do the chin because it's um, looks nicer. But his, um, he doesn't really talk about much else. In the image, the big difference between these two plays is in this play, he's in the inside of the opponent's position. In this play, he's decidedly on the outside, and deep. So he's on the outside of the leg. He's in the same place that we would um, we see in the third round of master. He has one hand low, but he has one hand high. Five. Okay. So that's, um, that's that's five because you're outside your frontal wall, right? Because you're outside your frontal wall, you're outside, and four because you're inside your right. Right. So 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 I submit that here's how the finishes will go. The finish of the, of the fifth play will be identical to the finish that I suggested for the third, which is that this place puts you deep. It puts you in a position where his balance is on His balance. His balance is on you. His balance is on you. And the throw is going to be you moving your balance away. Right? And if you push them, you're going to move your balance away, and that's going to be the throw. Whereas with the fourth play, you're inside his position. He's not, his balance isn't on you. So you have to actually use your arms and push, shear him to the ground. So the fourth play will. You'll, you'll press straight forward, straight forward, and the fifth play, you're gonna, uh, as soon as you, you know, you're gonna shear them kind of sideways, and as soon as that balance is gone, you can step back and drop. So that, 
That's one way to do it. That's one view. Have we moved from the triangle interpretation? Triangle interpretation. So I think that kind of still stays in the triangle. Just another way to talk about it. It's there. Yeah, yeah. So this one, right? There. It's there. And this one is there. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's doctrine on both times. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's it's yeah. So th yeah, that's another way to, to, to put it, and uh, I think it's a perfectly fine way to put it. Um, yeah. Okay. Any other any other thoughts about this before we do it? No? Okay, let's do it. Um, there's no setup that Theory gives. So we kind of just do it in isolation. We start with a cross-body grip and then we, and then we do it. Sure. Um, the cross-body grip is equal. So either partner can do it. Um, in, Cross-body grip. Though, oh yeah, the last thing to say is this: um, a totally picture, uh, a totally picture-focused argument is one that I make, which is that it's always lead hand, lead foot, and this is breaking with the tradition of what how Emma's done it. Emma's had a bunch of different interpretations over the past, and all of them have kind of had different hands forward and different feet forward with different forms of their play. There's lots of scholar tests where the scholars. Have Okay, here's the fourth play, here's the fifth play, and then here's a fourth play, and here's the fifth play, and all this, all this sort of stuff, right? The hands, hands and feet are rotating and, 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 and fine. I'm not making a value judgment about that. What I am saying is that if pictures matter, it's curious that all of the all of the manuscripts line up, right? All of them have, and all of them show the fourth and fifth play, show the fourth play like this, and the fifth play like this, and the the shearers are always lead hand, lead foot, lead hand, lead foot. So if you do that, it will work. It may work, it may be a case of better and best. You know, it's not like you couldn't do with other configurations, of course, right? It can be done, it can be done. But I would say that the best is lead hand, lead foot. You need to pull together. This guy stepped back, you can let it play. Mm -hmm. Then there's also that, right? There's also the other link. Yeah, except you would have to then step outside of that. Yeah. But that's fine. Just to get it. Just taking it away. However. Yeah, right. Let's do it. Do a bunch. Do a bunch. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So cross body grab.
be careful on the line in this one because I have only compressed it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. So you are. Yeah, you're there. Yeah, that's all you got to compress. Yeah, so, uh, so, no. so yeah, 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 I'm going with yeah. deeper, like, yeah. 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 almost walking into your crotch. Right? Like, because, yeah. 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 because that allows me to stay. Yeah. 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 Because you are quite just like, yeah. 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 and you're not sick. Yeah. 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 But if I walk between your legs, like, yeah. 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 then I have this, for myself. Yeah, Actually, I was on my number one. Let's actually try to do this with the, at least once. Let's just try and see what it kind of feels like. Okay, just, just once. You don't have to actually dig your nails into the shit. But like, just, just, just do it once. You all deserve it in some way. Right? <laughs> including me. Hey, you don't know I like it. <laughs> including me. KC loves it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's so bad. <laughs> good, good pay compliance? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, especially if you're on the CD. Alright, Alan, you're going to win. Go ahead. Uh, uh, so, 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 no back there, go back there. Yeah. Yeah. Of life and death. 
problem. I read these first six plays as the most common situation in life or death combat because they're literally just high grabs and close grabs. And everything else that falls after, I think, is some species of other shit that is less common, right? Um, face, face pushes and, and ear pokes and stuff. Fireman's carry, um, escape from behind, the Gambarolo, that's pretty common, but still, knee to the nuts from a close grapple, right? You know, the full Nelson, the other pain compliance plays. I think that, by and large, these things are less common, and there's a lot of pain compliance if you don't follow. But the first six, to me, that's the core of the section, because it pretty much gives us something to do against most of the things. Um, and they're, they're, they're low, they're low uh, uh, complexity plays, you can do them, if they don't work, you can do something else. And they fold it on each other. So great. We have a we have a we have a really simple way to kind of do the basic stuff, and uh, and, and then we'll add on dagger stuff to it. And, and and all of the all of the disarms, the breaks, the keys, and the throws, and the dagger section are technically out of that. So even though they're in different sections, we uh, you know in my mind they're often separated because dagger we do you know keys and breaks. But in grappling, we do the, you know, the first six plays, right? They're, just, they're, they're all grappling. But the most common situations, I think, is what we're talking about here, and that's what we've done. So, um, cool. That's great. Um, yeah, any last thoughts on this one? This place? No. No? Um, cool. I mean, more of a step in a way that when we throw them, we don't use your bias. That's almost true. Yeah. So for, for the scholar level of doing these plays, um, we're beyond actually the, broadly speaking, we're beyond the mere mechanics of it, usually easy and reliable, but it's the tempo of them, I think, is the deep challenge for us, mm -hmm. certainly a challenge for me. Mm -hmm. So when we're, when we're wrestling, for the, the next challenge for us is to do them in, as soon as the opportunity arises, without having to fucking think about it for five seconds. Is this it? Is this it? Okay, I think it is. Okay, I'm gonna do it. All right, it's still there. Okay, is it still there? Okay, all right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it, and I try. Right, that's usually my thought process. Right, and that's why I'm, I'm really slow. And usually by that time something's changed. Right. So when we do full speed grappling, um, when we're doing that stuff, I think it's the tempo of these plays that we're not focusing on. Okay. All right, that's uh, close. Oh, did we actually find toilet paper? Yeah. Is this 